Impression scanning capability has been added to all three shape lab scanners starting from D700 model in 2008. It was an add-on module and it took significantly longer than scanning a gypsum model. Recently, we have developed this feature further than before, allowing to scan dye and adding it to impression to cover difficult to scan areas like undercuts in impression, heavily angulated preps, or elongated, narrow teeth. Let's look at an example how it can be used. I have a posterior triple tray impression for a three unit bridge. We will create an order form for this situation using posterior triple tray, but obviously it can be used for single impression or individual trays with a bite. First, we need to create an order form, selecting correct indications. We have three unit bridge spanning between lower left first molar and first premolar. After that, we will choose what we are planning on scanning. This time, it will be posterior triple tray impression. We also need to select model if we are planning on producing one. At the beginning, we simply need impression that doesn't have a big overhangs if it's not necessary for the case. Impressions of different colors can be used for scanning. Using scannable impression material makes the whole process easier and may reduce the need of using individual die scanning. Impression can be mounted on dedicated impression tray fixture, but individual impressions could be mounted on blue tag as long as impression material is not going to be pushed through the tray and distorted. Following instructions in the software, we will mount impression in the way that it's centered in the scanning area and software will start scanning process. Uh, we can see point cloud being built up, followed by post-processing. After model is completed, we should evaluate if we have sufficient amount of data or if we should select more areas for additional scanning stages. If model looks good, we should trim it and move to the lower jaw. When using impression fixture and using triple tray, we can simply flip top side of it with impression. In that way, we will use full advantage of triple tray and bite will be kept. It is worth mentioning that there are some differences in between D and E series scanners to F8, as the latter one is equipped with vertical impression fixture. So, flipping triple tray scan is not needed, but it is possible to use a classic impression fixture in F8. Scanning prep side looks similar to antagonist, but we need to mark annotations. And as it is in dental system, we should mark them on preparation, backhaul, labial, or facial side close to the margin line. If you will do it correctly, you will benefit in the further stages. As much as scanning time is strictly dependent on scanner model, the size of the object that we are scanning and detail level required, post-processing, so triangulation, depends on computer hardware components. We can notice significant time improvement on triangulation or post-processing when we have a better hardware components installed as well as good graphic card, as this is the one that can be used to speed up calculation process. You can find this option in scanning settings. Another option that will have a time penalty is texture scanning. For some cases, it might be helpful to include that in the scan, but for a majority of it, it will not be necessary. When model is fully calculated, we need to evaluate if scan quality at the prep and margin line is good. It is expected that very thin layers of impression materials will be squeezed between prep and gingiva, and those might not be possible to post-process ideally. It could be another argument for scanning dyes individually. Let's assume that our scan is not ideal. Then we could try to use additional scan feature. We have additional settings available for number of attempts to make full surface coverage, and it is a maximum number of attempts that the scanner will try to make the cover in sufficiently scanned areas. When this method will not give us satisfactory results, then we can look into scanning dies. We can scan either one or multiple dies, depending on what operator will decide to be sufficient. Then we will simply scan dies like we would scan them for any other case. Place them in the center of the scanning tray with leveled margin and start scanning. 
If you have placed your annotation point close to the margin line and the margin line on the die is leveled, you will not need to worry about scanner not capturing enough data. You can move back and fix annotation points, location, or temporarily increase the value of scanning die below the margin line in settings. But remember to bring it back afterwards as it will try to scan every single die with those settings until it has been changed again. Software should fit dies to the impression scan automatically, but it may encounter a problem if die is short or very symmetrical. Obviously, corrections are possible using three-point alignment. Similar process can be repeated on other elements. If the byte from triple tray is incorrect, we should rescan impression as individual trays and bytes. At the end, we should make a final check to verify that all data is correct. In Model Builder, we will see that software will try to fix the gap between the impression and design die. But we can also make corrections in the areas around the margin line. Rest of the Model Builder processes will be similar to case designed on the gypsum model.